Welcome back everyone. This week we're going to be learning how to make a regional dish called the poulet à la brillard, uh, which is simply pieces of sauteed chicken that are cooked in cider, cream and mustard. This is a dish full of history and it is well worth the trial. So if you want to learn a little bit about the origin of the dish and how to make it, keep watching. <laughs> So this week's recipe has got a bit of an odd name. It's called the poulet à la briard. And what does it mean? It means the chicken cooked in the briard way. Uh, briard. So the Pays Briard, uh, it's a region on the eastern sides of Paris. And it is kind of sandwiched between Paris and the Champagne region uh, to kind of approximately give you an idea. So all these little towns in there, uh, they, a lot of produce are being made. A lot of producers of cider, mustard, uh, cheese, and basically that recipe says that we're making a recipe using all the products from that region. So one of the towns that is very famous is the town of Meaux. And you may have heard about this. And the mustard that you can, you can find there, the moutard de Meaux, the mustard from Meaux that is defended uh, fiercely always uh, uh, as a competitor between the Dijon mustard, which is another town that makes mustard. And of course you get the brie. And the brie de Meaux, as you can see here, you have a brotherhood as well that defends the brie to make sure it is made the traditional way. You see, these guys are the defenser of the brie. I love to show this brotherhood always. Always fun to see. But there's other towns doing other things, a lot of medieval village, and you also have a lot of orchards. And orchards is where the cider comes uh, in that recipe. It's meant to be a cider from the Briard region, but obviously for me here, I don't have all of these products. I'm just going to show you what we can do to recreate that recipe using uh, things you can find uh, in your shop, in your supermarket, and still get something good on your plate. Okay, so let's have a look at the ingredients. So as much as this recipe is using a lot of uh, the local produce, uh, mainly it has to be an old-fashioned mustard. We've got some cider. It can be sweet or uh, medium dry. Some good quality cream. The rest of the ingredients uh, is simple. Uh, chicken that I've cut into it, that was a whole chicken, and we're gonna use the offcuts to make the kind of the stock, uh, the, the old technique from Bocuse. And here, of course, we've got a simple garnish, uh, carrot, shallots, a bit of parsley, and I'm gonna add, this is my personal touch, uh, some oyster mushroom, but you don't even have to. And the whole purpose here is to saute the chicken and make the sauce uh, with cream, cider, and mustard. And that's it. And now let's start the recipe. So the first thing we're gonna do, uh, using that uh, so-called Bocuse technique, uh, is to melt a bit of butter, and a little bit of oil, and we're just gonna start to brown the offcuts of chicken. And that's it. we're gonna use this to create some kind of instant stock. Okay, so I'm using a medium heat, and when it's hot, I'm gonna use all the offcuts. It's up to you, this is the wings that I've cut in there, there's a bit of the necks. And we're not gonna use too many for this recipe, because we just want a, just a layer of flavor. So if you've missed some other episode that I've shown that technique, and the whole purpose here is to reuse all of the carcass. And instead of making a stock on the side, and we're gonna put all of the flavor directly with how chicken and cook how chicken with the offcuts. So I guess we're gonna benefit from everything. This is gonna release flavors. We're gonna discard this afterwards and it's gonna create a stock directly into the pan. So that's enough. The coloring is there. I'm gonna discard these. And instead, I'm gonna to start to add my pieces of chicken and brown them the same way. I'm not using any new oil, and I'm just gonna control my heat here. Don't overcrowd your pan. If you don't have enough space, you do it in batches. For the coloring, nothing excessive. A nice blondish color like this is enough on each side. So you can spend a good five minutes on each side per piece of chicken. All of my chicken is now ready. I'm going to reduce the heat for now while I take the piece of chicken out and reserve them on the plate. And we're going to add the garnish in. So as you can see, we've got some natural grease, some good color. So what we're going to do here is use all of the shallots and the carrots. And you can use a medium heat. And just for a few minutes, we're going to cook or sweat these vegetables before we do a deglazing. After a few minutes, we're gonna add about, what, barely 50 milliliters of cider and start the deglazing. So deglazing, uh, what is it exactly? Basically, we are detaching and gathering all of the cooking, uh, the caramelized juices from the meat into the cider here to create the base of our sauce. And of course, you're gonna have some of the sweetness of the carrot and the taste of the shallots. Okay, so we're gonna leave this to reduce a little bit until it's almost dry. 
you can raise your heat if you want. So as soon as your cider is almost reduced, I'm gonna add here all the offcuts of chicken that we had. And just to create a base of flavor, and that's gonna be acting as our stock, huh, if you wish. And then for the rest, basically, and we're just gonna uh, use our pieces of chicken and put them back into the dish. Finally, we're gonna take some of the cider we have and we're just gonna cover the whole lot with cider and we're gonna cook the chicken in that sauce for a good 25 to 30 minutes. And we're not gonna be using the cream or the mustard right now. That's gonna be for afterwards when we make the sauce. As soon as you see the boil come back into your pan, you can reduce your heat to medium low uh, and we're gonna cook this covered. Now, if you use a farmhouse chicken, a very good quality, it may take uh, 35 plus minutes. And don't forget that after 15 minutes, we're gonna have to take out the chicken breast and reserve them on the tray and keep them warm to avoid so that they dry. And because the legs, of course, they take a little bit longer. Cooking time, roughly 15 minutes for the, uh, the breast and about 25 minutes for the legs, okay? So we cover the dish and leave it to cook on medium to low heat. Time is up, so it did took me about 25. Let's, mmm, ooh, that smells good. Yes, I like it. So I'm gonna take my uh, legs out of there. Uh, the, as I said, the, the breast was already gone. And from here, basically, and we're gonna first taste the base. So the base, of course, is this. Uh, that's a bit of the stock with the cider. It smells already very fruity. Mmm, oh. Definitely medium dry cider, perfect. It's round, it's fruity. You can feel the apple, but not too much. And the chicken just in the background with the hint of salt and pepper in there, perfect. So I've got a very good base. So from here, we're gonna be crafting the sauce. And you've got two choices here, okay? The first option is to remove just uh, the discarded species of, of meat we don't want. This was just for the flavor. And then pass your sauce through a sieve to just keep the juices, to have a clean sauce with the mustard. This is what I'm gonna do, okay? This is more the advanced kind of proper restaurant style of making a sauce. If you want, you can just remove the, the pieces of meat here, leave the garnish, add the cream in, and do the same reduction that I'm gonna do. So it's up to you, okay? So for me, I'm gonna use the option number one, which is discarding these and passing the sauce through and put it back into the pan. Now you may wonder why am I using that technique? Because I don't want to have a mush of carrots and shallot into my sauce. You see the star of the show here is gonna be the mustard and we want to show that. This is the whole purpose here. So I've got my base, this is all the importance and we're not trying to showcase the carrots from the region, you see? And what's important here is to show off the mustard, yeah, the chicken and the taste of cider. So all what we're gonna do here is to add all of the cream, bring this to a high heat and then leave this to reduce to a spoon coating consistency. That's all what it takes for that sauce, okay? It's very, very simple. Now my sauce has thickened enough. I'm gonna turn my heat off and I think we've reached that so-called spoon coating consistency. So what is it basically? You take a spoon, you look at the back of your spoon and when you use your finger and you have a clear mark like this, you see, it's not falling off like being too liquid. That's a spoon coating consistency. So. The sauce is now almost ready. Now we need to add the mustard and that happens of the heat. So turn the heat off and then we're gonna add the mustard in. So some of you may have been wondering, uh, why am I removing that garnish? Because now the mustard is the star of the show. And you see, it is a grainy mustard. So what is gonna happen? It is gonna basically uh, decorate our sauce and add some taste in there. So the flavor of the mustard, but all of the grains, and this is what you want to see. Now, it's not about the carrots or the shallots, and it's about the mustard. Okay, so I'm adding, just adding a bit more, and make sure you taste in between you have too much mustard in there. Usually one or two tablespoons maximum. My mustard is in. I've taken my chicken out of the oven. I'm just gonna add some of the juices from the chicken to add some further taste. A final stir in there, okay. And then we're gonna serve immediately. Put the chicken in a dish and pour the sauce over. So here we are. So I've got a little trick up my sleeve. I'm gonna add some uh, saute mushrooms afterwards. And you can see the chicken doesn't look like much. But what I'm gonna do now is to take all of this beautiful sauce and just pour it over the chicken. And this nice mustard and cider sauce. All the grains of mustard everywhere. 
Mm, look at that. Okay, so we've got the base. Huh? If the sauce is not totally on top, you can make sure and with a spoon to cover all the pieces of chicken with a bit of the mustard seeds. And from here, I'm gonna start adding, that's a bit, you know, my touch, a sprinkle of uh, chanterelle mushrooms. Huh? Something they call the oyster mushroom, oyster mushrooms over here. Okay. And then a little bit of parsley and that's gonna be it. And here we have it. So I've added a few bits of parsley. This is some glazed shallots that I had. But I think uh, what we need to do here is to uh, test, so I'll, I'll cut a little bit of the, the chicken here and, and, and oh, this is the sauce. Look at that creamy mustardy sauce in there. Very, very good. So let me try that. Big piece. Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah. That mustard, let me take a bit of the sauce. Mm. It has added a beautiful tanginess and everything has come on come together at the last moment. And this is what I love with these types of sauces. Always unexpected results. So I'm gonna plate this in a plate as well. So this is the family presentation. I'm gonna do plating individually and then we'll wrap up the video. And here we are, so serving suggestion number two, uh, if you want to play this individually, uh, this is how you can do it, and this is just one of my ideas. Now what I would say to finish, that this dish absolutely has to be on your uh, to-do list, uh, to-try list, because for me, great surprise. The use of this sweet cider brings a roundness into the dish, and the mustard at the end with the cream add a tanginess, and it all comes together. It's absolutely beautiful, highly recommended. So as always, if you try the dish, Please let me know what you think in the comment section. I always like to read these comments. And of course, if you want to share a picture of what you made, use Instagram, hashtag French Cook Academy. If you want to follow me, you can do so on Facebook or become a patron on my Patreon page. Don't forget, we still have our online culinary school. You can join anytime you want to learn the basics of French cooking. But that's it for me. I leave you with a beautiful picture and I'll see you next week for another French recipe. Bye bye. Thank you.